What's up, my crew members? My name is Andrew from the Superhero Crew, and I'm here with Coach from the Superhero Crew. Today, we're going to be having a discussion on Action Comics number 1000. Yes, Action Comics number 1000 has come out. Uh, it is an $8 graphic novel type deal, and they have a couple of short stories in here, but um, this is crazy. It's 80 pages, it's $8, 80 years of Superman, and 80 years of action comics. It's pretty, it's, it's, it's crazy to think about that. 1,000 issues of action comics it's great have enough. come out. And you know what's cool is um, they did it. They did it right where they did it was a bunch of short stories, all short stories. It wasn't like maybe seventy percent story and then another thirty percent of a new comic coming out. So they'll give you a preview from the beginning to the end. It was all Superman stories. Yes. The only thing is, is that the last story that's a preview. Okay, but that was so you read this. And it's basically because they've been they've been hyping this up that Bendis is coming, Bendis is coming. Yeah. So he writes it. Jim Lee um, is the artist, and the story doesn't end there. It's going to take you to well. Now you have to read um, Man of Steel. And I kind of like that they did that. It's like okay, so well, here's it, Action Comics one thousand. Here's a couple stories. Now, if you like these short stories, well, we got a little we got a little series for you. Well, the difference is is though like we would read Batman, and then they have the Terrifics. Yeah. Okay. And this is, I wanted to read about Superman, I read about Superman, oh, there's a continuation in the next series. I really like Superman, now I'm going to read it. I picked up Superman to read Superman. I didn't pick up Superman to read, you know, one of those new books, whatever. The, I keep saying the Terrifics, that's the one that comes to mind, but they have those new... Yeah, those, those new, new DC Universe right. books which is which, which is okay, but yeah. I don't want, you know, I don't want it to take up pages of the book that I, I originally bought. You know, you spend yeah, money... Yeah, that, that's... That's just like that. That's that's stupid. But I, I do. you know what I mean. So you buy Superman and you read about Superman. Hey, you wanna you wanna finish this story? Check out Man of Steel. Uh, there's a limited edition type deal. Yeah, because like you know we would read Batman and and they would have a preview for you know Sideways, the terrific mm -hmm. Silence, or all those crappy you know things. But let's talk about this. So we're not gonna really have like a we're not gonna talk about like each story individually. We're just kind of doing overarching. Uh, things so, overview. But what did you think of Action Comics? What I, I thought it was good. It was, it was, it was, I, I you know what? I, I think it was probably like, all right, we have a lot of good artists and writers. Who wants to do Action Comics number 1000? Everybody jumped at it. So they figured, you know what? Let's, let's get everybody do a quick little vignette about Star, about um, Superman. And, you know, you get a few pages to write and, and you put it in there. And they got, you know, like the top minds from DC. There's even, there's one story in there, there's actually two stories in there that Superman's not even in, but he directly affects them. So, and that was kind of cool. Like Mr. Mixoplick, he could have wiped, he could wipe out Superman with a thought, but because Superman makes him who he is, he's going to keep him around. And, and Superman wasn't even in the whole book, in that whole story. So it was... Um, it was very, you know, it was very cool. Um, I, some of them were weird. Tom King's story was weird. Yeah, I do... One thing that I um, found a little weird was... or I, I kind of liked it, but it was, it was a little weird. Uh, I'll tell you my thoughts about this whole thing in a bit, but uh, the story where they had, like, each page was like, okay, narration from Superman, but each page is like a different part of Superman's history. Right, so it, I, I liked it because it went through the history and different, different, the real thing was his costume was different and the S was different. Yeah. You, know, you could tell through the ages. So him during World War Two, him during some weird stories, you know, mm -hmm. but what I do like is this, mm -hmm. which um, apparently... It was from the Dark Knight series. Uh, is kind of trying to be like uh, Frank Miller's, you know, Batman, Knight. where he's, yeah. you know, go, doing that mm -hmm. pose, you know, which is which was pretty cool, you know, death or the return of Superman because you know he's fighting Mongol, and right? And he's that's the one from the '90s with the long hair and the black. Yeah, uh, he had the mullet, you know, mm -hmm. when he came back to life. Now this, I don't know if you know what this was, but this is a story called Kingdom Come, mm -hmm. which is an alternate or well, alternate future where like you know the superheroes retired, so like Superman retired, but then he came back and he had like the sharp S, which kind of symbolizes that he's 
kind of bad, you know what I mean? But um, that was interesting to see Kingdom Come. I was very surprised about that. And it was like, oh, you know, happy birthday, Superman. You know, it's the, he's, a, all, he's in the never-ending battle, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and they had some cool um, uh, artwork, like random just artwork pages here. Yeah. You know, by, by different thing, people. But John Romita Jr., I'm not a fan. You don't like John Romita Jr.? Never, never liked him. I didn't like him when he did Daredevil back mm. in the... Uh, Late eighties, early nineties, or just that whole typhoid Mary run. I didn't like it, but um, you know, it is. I mean, I I enjoyed it a lot. I kept I kept reading and reading and reading, and it was good because every artist has a different take of Superman. So they, everybody has a similar kind of um, main idea of Superman, but then they take it in their own direction. They kind of give it their artistic spin to it, and it showed him in different ways. You know, different. Uh, you know, different facets of his life or different times in his life. And I, I thought it was excellent. I thought this was, in my opinion, a very good synopsis of the life of Superman over the years. I thought, I thought it was excellent. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. I, when I, I was reading it, I, I don't know. I still am trying to figure out if I liked it or not. It just, for me... It, yes, it. Ca I think it did capture Superman. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been eighty years of Superman. He's been do. It's it, it's just if you think about it, eighty years of Superman. I I get that. I think this really captures that. You know, like it's been eighty years of Superman. Eighty years of Action Comics is a big deal. I think it captures like, you know, the whole thing about Superman. But at the same time, I kind of felt weird about it. I don't know. I don't know why. For whatever reason, I I, I, I liked it, but I didn't like it. No, I liked it. I, don't, I don't... But the funny thing is, I don't know why. I have, like, this feeling, like, all right, I liked it, but, like, I didn't like this. I didn't like... Like, I didn't like... One of the things I didn't like was the... This whole narration thing. Mm -hmm. When I was reading it, I was like... I get what they're trying to do, but it's very weird and... Well, they were just recounting... They, yeah, you know. and, and that should have been the first story, honestly, but... And the stories without Superman, where, like you said, he's inf like he's directly influencing things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, I get that he's you know, directly influencing things, but I want to see Superman. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I, I, like, I don't need but to that, see I, him fighting you know a monster. I just want to see him... Doing right. something, but out of the ten, the ten stories, you have eight with Superman and two without. So yeah, you know he can't be in every single page. So that's that was the interesting thing. Um, the story at the end I liked. Yeah, you know, I and that's good. setting up uh, the Man of Steel. the Man of Steel, which is going to be a six issue limited series that's going to go weekly, mm -hmm. starting uh, May thirtieth. Right. So that's going to be weekly, and that's going to be uh, from what this is. And if you don't want this spoiled. Uh, then, you know. Well, so basically, uh, Superman and Supergirl are fighting someone, and he's really powerful, and then you find out that he... He says that he destroyed Krypton. Yeah. And he's got to finish by destroying them. And that's, which, what, he, that's what he told... Which is weird. Like, why are they doing this? Because... And that's because, what the guy told Jor-El, too. So it's like he knows he knows who Jor-El was. And, but here's the thing, though. Like, but but why? Because... They just resolved uh, another story where Jor-El survived mm -hmm. and they are retconning now that this guy destroyed Krypton. They retcon that Jor-El actually survived Krypton's destruction. So now they're doing, they're doing, it, they're doing another retcon of Superman's, you know, the whole thing about Krypton. I, I, guess, I guess after 80 years, you got to keep doing this kind of thing. You know? Yeah. But again, like, but, like, like but you know. my, th I know that, but my thing is, it, that just happened. Like, they just finished that the Oz effect. They just finished that, and they're doing something new again that has to do with Krypton itself, and you know the ex the destruction of Krypton, and you know. So I guess Jor El was wrong about you know it wasn't you know whatever was going on Brainiac. with Krypton. It was just some guy, you know. Because I thought Brainiac did it. Did Brainiac do it? I don't know. Like, be, like that's what this, like this terrible, this show Krypton is 
I'm not watching it because I don't care, but I, I, it's probably not good. Um, they're trying to, I guess they're trying to do well, you can't, Gotham for Superman. You, got, you, gotta, but, you gotta watch it to really give an opinion. So, yeah, you know, but you don't, you know, it doesn't look good, but, but you still gotta and, watch and it. like Brainiac is there. I'm like, all right, but you know, like I, I know there's a couple things that say that like Brainiac destroyed Krypton. Like I, I can't remember if it was like if they had a story where Brainiac, like, is that the retcon, or is now they're retconning the retcon, you know, like, like, I don't, I don't know what they're doing, but I may pick up the first issue of Man of Steel, just to see what they're, go how they're going with it, and what they're going to do with that, and what Bendis is going to do with Superman, because that is the official start of, to Bendis, of Bendis writing Superman, his Action Comics is going to come out in, I think, July, Action Comics 1001, which I like that they're not going back to number ones, they're actually going 1001. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty pretty cool, mm -hmm. but um yeah. So anything else to add about Action Comics number one thousand? No, I mean I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. Yeah, like I said, I don't know. I just I, I I thought it was good, but at the same time I felt a little weird about it. Like as I was reading, I was like I was like oh, well, mm, eh, eh. but that's just my opinion, and my opinion doesn't really matter. So is that it? Yeah, anything else to add? So guys, if you like the video, please like, got any questions, comment down below, and subscribe for more comic-based videos, and we'll see you in the next one.